and welcome back to another episode of Into the 99. We've got 99 cards because Commander's number one. I am one of your hosts, Daniel. I am joined today with both Brian and Sloffy, a.k.a. Rando number four. How are you guys doing today? <laughs> uh, that was so good. <laughs> oh, doing pretty good. Thanks. How about yourself? Uh, I'm doing really good. We uh, We played a lot of games this weekend. I think I played like 13 or 14 hours of Magic. I played Magic Friday in the daytime, Friday night streaming, and then also Saturday night we did a stream as well so I, I got tons of games and it was a really really good time i was happy with those games even though uh the lore of brian <laughs> carried on yeah the the chat was really fun with those ones if you guys haven't seen them yet definitely check out the games we've been putting up on youtube they're a lot of fun to make lots of fun to play with uh slothy came out last night we he, he got the new nickname rando number four yep. oh, oh. slothy the homeless magic guy we, we, we brought him to the game by pulling up in our white van and offering him cards. <laughs> hey, you got some cards. Yeah. It was, uh, no, it was some really, really fun games. I had a, had a great time playing this weekend. Brian, how have you been? Oh, excellent. I was, uh, I was just not happy that the kill Brian first. Really, guys, I'm going to come out with like a full 30 minute video of just why everyone should target the head first and leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> all it is is just replays of my plays yeah the whole chat yesterday was so funny they're just going off every time brian castle they're like daniel tibble trickery it <laughs> yeah counter it <laughs> yeah they don't did, they don't did know that rando four, the one that does that yeah. did rando number four not kill brian yet <laughs> yeah exactly right no it was uh they were they were great games one of the games i actually played is the deck we're going to do today and i i talked about it when we did spoilers, and I think I talked about it again on last week's episode, I never shut up about this card. It's so fun. Like, it is just one of the coolest cards I've seen in a long time, and I'm amazed that it's a $3 card. My brain can't put that together. So uh, this week, if you've read the episode title, we're doing Urza, Prince of Krug. And this deck enables me to do my favorite thing in Magic, and we'll get to what my favorite thing in Magic is. Or my favorite card in Magic is in it. Uh, Urza is just a really, really cool, again, this is a $3 card for the foil, for the Altar foil. This is $3.49. It's amazing. Uh, Urza, Prince of Krug is two, one white, one blue for a two, three human artificer. Artifact creatures you control get plus two, plus two. Then for six mana, you create a token that's a copy of target artifact you control, except it's a one, one soldier in addition to its other types. This, the ability to just turn so many artifacts, A, into creatures, it, them being creatures isn't as important to the rest of it, but there's a lot of artifacts that get very, very silly. They're not meant to be copied and not meant to be copied in the quantity you can copy them with Urza. Yeah. I do have to say I really enjoyed the, 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 the new art style that they came out with, with like the blueprints on the sides. The blueprint yeah. arts are it's... really, really cool. Venaz. Yeah. We will, uh, we'll start this one off like my... My land section is like really, really thin. It's a pretty budget land section. We've got just like the two artifact lands for the colors. Uh, and then I have the artifact land that taps for the white and the blue, like the dual effect. Budget lands, $135 still, apparently. <laughs> yeah, why, why are your islands $6 each? <laughs> My islands are $6 each? Apparently. Yeah. 21 lands at $6 oh, pop. They, they, po <laughs> they populated as the jumpstart ones. That's so funny. <laughs> yes yeah this is my budget land base 135 dollars and it's yeah most of it let me let me just change that over right now really that, that's, that's really funny, so funny. <laughs> yeah no okay so they're yeah, they're just normal islands no no crazy jumpstart islands I'll, I'll put them as Baldur's gate islands there we go nice oh, bad <laughs> nice back where back where they should be all right, that does slim the deck budget down, too. I was like, this looks kind of expensive. There are some expensive cards in it, but yeah, the, the land base isn't too crazy, and then neither are any of my other segments. Like the, like I said, I build real different than Slothy, so we'll start with the sorceries. Uh, we've got Fabricate. It's two and a blue. You search your library for an artifact, reveal it, put it into your hand, and then shuffle. The whole point of the deck is to make new artifacts, so that's really going to work a lot. Like, it's really going to help you. It's very simple sorcery list, Dan. <laughs> Yeah. Don't you judge me. 
Next up, we have Rise and Shine, blue and a colorless. A target non-creature artifact you control becomes a one a zero zero artifact creature. Put four plus one plus one counters on each artifact that became a creature this way. And then so, overload for six, four. Number two, one, one, you're you're making so many artifact th like the deck's full of artifacts, and you're making artifact creatures. So everything that isn't a creature is going to become a creature. But uh, Urza's first ability is often overlooked, and it's an anthem. So you're going to make everything that is non-creature six sixes with this. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah, really, really strong ability. And for the other ones, like the uh, Urza's already buffing them up. So Rise and Shine is really going to put a lot of work, and it's a great finisher in any artifact theme deck. And it's just a really cool card that came out. And the, uh, the third and final source we've got is uh, Sahili's Artistry, four double blue. Uh, choose one or both. Create a token that's a copy of target creature, or artifact, sorry. Or create a token that's a copy of target creature, except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. This is killer. Yeah. This, uh, this really does a lot of cool stuff in this deck, particularly because you're already making... Things you want to copy are going to become creatures. So you can hit, like, two... Uh, if you had like two uh, Gilded Lotus, for instance, right? And you've already made a copy. One's a creature, one's not. You can make another Gilded Lotus and then another creature Gilded Lotus. So you can get another six man out of this, basically making this like essentially a free spell instantly, which is kind of nice. But uh, it also, the really, really nice thing about this is you can get a, co uh, a, a copy of any target. Yeah, I can't talk. A copy of any target creature on the battlefield. So anything that's problematic you can still hit with Sahili's artistry, and then with Urza's ability, it's nearly impossible to get rid of it, because if somebody tries to remove the problematic thing you've made a copy of, you just make another one. So I'm, if I copy, yeah. for instance, like Brian's Avacyn, and then Brian's like, oh, don't worry, I'll path to exile that Avacyn. I'm like, all right, I'll pay six mana and make another Avacyn. Yeah. It's so yeah. annoying. Yeah, it's. I yeah. really, really like Sahili's artistry. It puts in just a ton of work in a deck like this. So yeah, I know you're absolutely. excited, Dan. Just take take a couple deep breaths, and then we'll carry on here. <laughs> For which one? <laughs> just you get you getting out of uh, out of words here. Oh no, that's that's just my brain doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> that's no excitement. Um, we've also got two two planeswalkers. It's this this list is pretty much all artifacts. If you can't guess, uh, so the first planeswalker is going to be Tezzer the Seeker. It's just very solid in any artifact theme deck in general it's uh three and double blue you plus one untap up to two artifacts a minus x is search your library for an artifact with converted mana cost x or less put on the battlefield and shuffle and minus five is they all become five fives uh, artifacts you control become artifact creatures with base power and toughness five five so seven sevens with hers out which is a game ender yep and it starts at four loyalty yeah i actually like that Clanswalker. Yeah, do you want to take this yeah. next one here, Brian? Sure. We have Ugin, the ineffable, effable, uh, six colorless legendary planeswalker Ugin. Uh, color spells you cast cost two less to cast. Plus one exiled the what is that? Let me zoom in here. Uh. <laughs> Woo! Exile the top card of your library face down and look at it. Create a 2-2 colorless spirit creature token. When that token leaves the battlefield, put the exile card into your hand. Oh, that's neat. And then minus three, destroy target permanent. That's one or more... To sorry? That's one or what? more colors? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. The, the, the writing on this card is really small on my screen for some reason. <laughs> yeah, it's just, just solid removal. But the yeah. fact that you're going to get... the Again, the, the deck list is mostly artifacts. So the fact that you're going to get a two mana reduction on them and some removal is nice. Oh, yeah. No, that's very nice for this deck, actually. Yeah, I, lo I love the uh, Ugin. <laughs> I'm just looking through my other sections. They're all pretty also weak. We'll do we'll do instance, we'll do enchantments, and then we'll move on. So, Slothy, you start us instance. Sure. So the first instance, instant we got is Lauren's Escape. It's uh, one white. Target artifact or creature gains hexproof and indestructible until end of turn and scry one. How have I not seen this? Oh, it's one of the new cards. Yeah, it's one of the it's new cards. Yeah, really, really solid piece of protection. This just seems to slot into everything that I do. 
<laughs> yeah. This next one's one of my favorite cards to kill people in this deck with, again, just a really stupid card that we'll talk about when we get to it. But this is a masterful replication. Uh, five and a blue, it's an instant. You can choose one. You create two colorless golem artifact creatures you control. That's not horrible if you need blockers, but that's not what we want. It's choose target artifact you control. Each other artifact you control becomes a copy of it until end of turn. This can really, really be a giant problem if you have anything that... Uh, like, I have some damage reduction artifacts. I have a lot of draw artifacts. This can really, really end the game for someone. If anyone's playing a, a blue deck and has, uh, like, a Teferi's Ageless Insight, something like that, mm -hmm. you're going to get hurt against this deck with the Masterful Replication. Like, I've never seen this card, but I like it. Yeah, it's, it's really, really cool. And there's a lot of artifacts that are definitely worth power buffing like that. Like, just for one turn, I want to have eight um mirage mirrors yeah and then i can have whatever i wanted <laughs> well yeah th there's just like a lot of cards that are really really solid with that uh ability like even just uh making all of my things into mirror turbines for instance right is then i can go and like just turn everything into a token generator for the turn and uh, like effectively double my artifacts mm -hmm. there yeah there there's a lot of cool ones we'll get to for sure there's one in here. Maybe I'm just meaner than you guys. I'll bring it up when we get to it. Okay, okay. <laughs> and then, yeah, Brian, you want to finish this instant section? I, I love that we're saying finish this instant section at three. <laughs> we're, we're three sections deep and we're at we're at eight cards. So you're, you're talking about being mean. And like in this deck, like the first thing that's popping to mind is I just want to make a whole bunch of like mesmeric orbs. <laughs> <laughs> I should have put Mesmeric Orb in this. I never even considered that. But again, with that masterful replication, just, yeah, turning everything into uh, someone's ramped out really hard. And yeah, they've got like 15 lands untapped. I will turn 10 artifacts into Mesmeric Orbs. Go ahead, untap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I, 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 yeah, I'm just thinking about it. I was like, that would be totally funny, but super greasy. <laughs> That would be rough. <laughs> the the next card that we do have here is is that Weir W H I R Were Were yeah, of Invention X and three blue instant improvise. Your artifacts can help you cast the spell. Search your library for an artifact card with converted mana cost X or less. Put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. And even like most of the times, that's I don't know if that's gonna be a five, a five guy like drop because most artifacts are like two that you're going to fetch. Yeah, well, you're you're gonna want it to be more than that. Like you're gonna want to go grab a good artifact with it, but you've got so many yeah. artifacts that it's gonna be really easy to hit that. Yep. Um, spoiler for the spoiler, there's a lot of ramp in this deck. There is there is a lot. Like I really want to use Urza's ability. There is a lot of ramp in this deck. Well, it's so, so easy with artifacts. You're not wrong. Yeah. Um, so our enchantment section, very weak, very small. It could be much better. Uh, the Mirrored and Besieged is a great one for this. I just, as I repeatedly say all the time, I build from what is generally in front of me at the time, and I didn't have Mirrored and Besieged in front of me, but that's a really, really good one with how many artifacts you have. And a good alternate uh, kill people condition if you get board wiped. I don't know um, how I haven't seen this first enchantment that you have. Efficient construction, yeah, it's a really solid one. It's three and a blue for whenever you cast an artifact spell, you get a one-one colorless thopter artifact with flying. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I'm gonna pick that up today. I did not even know about this card, and I played during that set. <laughs> that's fair. There's uh, take this next one here, Brian. So we have mechanized production, two colorless, two blue, enchantment aura. Enchant artifact you control. At the beginning of your upkeep, create a token that's a copy of enchanted artifact. Then if you control eight or more artifacts with the same name as one another, you win the game. I like this one. Yeah, that's great, actually. For, as a four drop, that's not bad at all. No. Uh, yeah, I love a good you win the game. And again, it's doing what the deck is liking to do, which is making tokens of artifacts. Like, I'm just sitting here thinking of dropping that on, like, the was it the Blightsteel Colossus? I'm like, I just get all of these things with Infect what and Trample. What <laughs> kind of animal would put Blightsteel Colossus into an artifact deck? That's not in this artifact deck. Uh-huh. 
I'm looking. I like, that I, I I like that I just scroll up to double check. I was like, is it? Yeah. No, I, got... I, put, I, I put that in the other artifact. That's in Liberator. <laughs> Oh, that, that, that's in this one too. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. That that's in the creature section. Interesting. Yeah. No. Again, what kind of animal would put something like that in this deck? I'm just like telepathically that's... reading some minds here. <laughs> yeah. That was that was my masterful replication target. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. That, again, what kind of animals are you guys? <laughs> when you're sitting um, there like 30 artifacts on the field, like well, I'm gonna turn well, them all into blight steals. <laughs> especially going back to that efficient construction and stuff. It, a lot of times when you do anything that all your artifacts become creatures like the Tezzeret effect, the Masterful, you have like 40 artifacts out. Um, that's the also that enchantment one too that makes all the enchantments with their power. I do you like yeah. that one? Starfield and Nyx? Opalescence. That's, I think Opalescence is uh, enchantments though. I think there's a, I think there's an artifact, or yeah, an artifact one too. Hmm. I think it's March the Machines. That's a cool name. If there is no guard name, dot. Yeah, don't quote me on that. That might just be something that's going on in my brain. But, and if not, wizards, there, there you go. There's a thought, yeah. <laughs> thought present for from us to you. <laughs> and then, yeah, I will, I will end our enchantment section again. Another three section. Uh, it's just tempered steel. It's one double white artifact creatures you control get two two. Obviously. Yeah. It, it, it's just a really, really big buff. The fact that. All of your Thopters from Efficient Construction, for instance, can come out as 5-5s five because of Urza and this card. That's a problem. That's a, a really big issue, really quick. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, let's do... We'll do our creatures, and then we'll go into artifacts. <laughs> it's Ooh. a smaller list, so it makes sense. <laughs> um, yeah, the first creature we got here is Arkham Dagson. Uh, three and a blue, legendary creature, human artificer. It's a 2-2. Two -two. Uh, you can tap it to have target artifact creatures controller sacrifice sacrifices it. That player may search their library for a non-creature artifact card, put it onto the battlefield, and then shuffle their library. Huge problem if I get that out. Mm -hmm. Huge, huge problem. This deck uh, needs a portal to Phyrexia, but I couldn't find any. Those cards just didn't get pulled. But that's a card I really want to be cloning lately. Yeah. Yeah, portal to Phyrexia is another great card to slot into this list just in advance if you find a portal to Phyrexia and want to. What does it do? Uh, Portal to Phyrexia, it's like nine mana when it enters. Each player sacrifices three creatures. Uh, each opponent sacrifices three creatures. And then every upkeep, you bring a creature from a grave back. And that's something you can copy. So oh. you can constantly... Yeah. Wow. It's not legendary. So with Urza's ability, you can just like sit and have like ten of them where every time they enter, people like... If you have the mana, you could copy it like four times. Everyone sacrifices twelve creatures. And then every upkeep, you get four... That's, creatures back. That's Wonder Bar. Yeah, some, some real animal stuff. Speaking okay. of some real animal stuff, uh, Blightsteel Colossus has made an appearance in the deck. Again, who would who would do this? Not me. Uh, it's 12 mana, 11, 11, trample, infect, indestructible. If it would be put into a graveyard from anywhere, reveal it and shuffle it into its owner's library instead. Yeah, in a, in a deck that you can clone artifacts, this is, uh, this is always good. And Urza <laughs> is not non-creature. It is just target artifact you control. So you can make copies of Blightsteel that are hilariously only 1-1s, one -ones, but still funny. What set is this next card out of? Is this one of the new fancy 40k uh, things? The, no, the Kamigawa stuff. But, yeah. I, I, knew that the, I knew that that's one that you'd like for sure. Yeah, take that one, Brian. Drum Bellower? And I'm, is this new, though? Like, Is this like the last Kamigawa set? Yeah, like it, it just, it's recently. Oh, okay. So yeah, Drum Bellower 2 and a white. Uh, it's a spirit flying. Untap all creatures you control during each other player's untap step. I need $5. I want them all. Yeah, Drum Bellower. Yeah. It's, uh, especially because we're cloning, like I said earlier, like a Gilded Lotus, for instance, right? Untapping those Gilded Lotuses every turn is a problem. Because they're creatures. <clears throat> yeah. Oh. Yeah. They're fun. Um, it's a seaborn use. <laughs> love it. I love it. <laughs> Glad you like it, Brian. Yeah. Please continue on. <laughs> I'm just going to sit here and love this for more. <laughs> um, 
Next up, we got Ethereum Sculptor, one and a blue for an artifact creature of a Dulcan Artificer, one, two. Artifact spells you cast cost one less. Yeah. Makes Another sense. one that slots into every artifact deck. Yeah, well, that and the Foundry Inspector, next thing on the list there, the three mana artifacts cost one less to cast. It's a three, two. That's, uh, if you can get copies of those, that's a real problem. All my artifacts become free? Yeah. Then we got Gold Mirror. This is like uh, the last set that I could stop playing before I like eventually moved out to Calgary. Uh, but this one just two drop, and it's a mirror, obviously, and it taps for a plane, so it's a little one one. True. Lots of ramp. I'll let you take your favorite card down. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm gonna take this slot that you have the next one. So it's a Howling Golem. I love Howling Mine. I love Howling Golem. The deck is called Howling Legion for an unspecified reason. Uh, it's three mana for a two three. Golem, uh, whenever it attacks or blocks, each player draws a card. Yeah. Its flavor text is great, too. It wails, it wails of, of buried... Yeah, go, go ahead. It wails of buried riches and the souls lost seeking them. Yeah, I really like this card a lot. I want someone to... Someone send us some video clips. What do you think it's wailing about? Go. <laughs> True. <laughs> This, uh, uh, the, yeah, the next one's nuts. Take it, Sloppy. Yeah, this next one is uh, Jingataxis Progress Tyrant. Five double blue for a 5-5 five, five legendary creature, Phyroxian Praetor. Whenever you cast an artifact, instant, or sorcery spell, copy that spell. You may choose new targets for the copy. Uh, this ability triggers only once each turn. And whenever an opponent casts an artifact, instant, or sorcery spell, counter that spell, and then it triggers only once each turn. I was looking at that yesterday. The card's gross. Yeah. Especially for us, like, uh, doubling up our artifacts, but also the protection it's providing. Mm -hmm. It is a nice protection. Again, it's, uh, it reminds me of, like, uh, what, the glass spinner? Yeah, Kira. And then the next one up, we have Master Transmuter, three and a blue. Artifact creature, human artificer. It's a tap, a blue, tap it. Return an artifact you control to its owner's hand. You may put an artifact card from your hand onto the... Oh, wow. It swaps places. I like it. Yeah, it's really good to cheat in a Blightsteel. Yeah. I just didn't even think of this. Tap the soul ring for of... one. Return what? it. What kind of monster would do that? What kind of animal? Uh, yeah, no, it's really, really good to, uh, like, to just sit and like blink out like um, anything, like even like a Mox Amber if you have. Zero mana, return it. It's, you, it's good. You lost my respect with the next card, Dan. With the next card, yeah, Memnark. So, uh, again, there's a lot of ramp in the deck. And Memnark is twofold. Number one is it's a seven-mana wizard. It's legendary. It's four or five. It has two abilities. And we care greatly about both of these abilities in this deck. Number one, it is one double blue. Target permanent becomes an artifact in addition to its other types. Any of my uh, creatures that I want to... Like, anything that is... Not like a Master Transmuter, for instance, right? Or the Ethereum Sculptor. Any of those cards that I want more of, turning them into an artifact so that I can clone them is great. I didn't even think as about well. doing, like, your own stuff. Yeah, as well. So that's, like, really, really great that you can do that. Uh, I can get more mechanized productions. I can get more of the tempered seals. Like, there's a lot of really, really cool things that we can make copies of. Oh, the you other can side. make copies of the auras. Can you make those artifacts and then copy those, too? Of which ones? Like the auras, your the enchantments. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. Like oh the, wow, that's yeah, fantastic! So you could make like you could make ten, twenty efficient constructions if you wanted. Amazing, I love it. Yeah, so it, it's pretty good in that sense, but it has another ability, and that other ability is three and a blue. You gain control of target artifact. First off, taking people's soul rings, hilarious. It's always a good time, but uh, you generate. You can generate a lot of this. This deck is pretty silly, and you can at a certain point generate enough mana to just take the board. I didn't put any of the like the infinite like uh, like uh, rings of bright hearth kind of infinite combo stuff in here to generate the infinite mana, but you get to a point where you have close enough where you can. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it becomes a problem. Uh -huh. Next up. Next up. Yeah. <clears throat> is, uh, oh, do you want to take this one? 
No, no, go ahead. Okay, we got Metal Worker. It's a three colorless. Uh, this card's too rich for my blood, but I've seen it and seen it in person. Uh, you tap it. Reveal any number of artifact cards in your hand. Add two colorless mana to your mana pool for each card revealed this way. And it's like Care Bear staring down a golem. You can make a lot of copies of this. Yep. I'll reveal the same card six times. 12 mana? Yeah. Well, no, it's for each artifact you reveal. Oh, wow, yeah. So if you if you reveal five artifacts six times, you get 60 mana? 50 mana? No 60 mana, yeah. My math was right. Yeah, it's a lot. And then you get 10 Urza activations, you make 10 more Metal Workers, things repeat itself. I uh, I like Metal Worker because of, number one, it's great ramp, but number two, I like to threaten the table. And I would sit and just, like, reveal, like, here's a Blightsteel, here's a Memnarch. In my mind now, I'm just popping in with, like, Urza and the fashionable boots. I'm just make, trying to make a copy of all, all the different boots and equip them to everyone. <laughs> True. Yeah. Swords, yeah. swords Urza could be really, really fun, too, if you put a ton of ramp in and, like, just gave him the swords. Oh, yeah. Can you imagine being slapped with 10 swords of fire and ice? <laughs> Wouldn't like that. Nope. Uh, you want to take this next one, Slothy, here? Sure. Uh, this next one we got is uh, Padim, Console of Innovation. Three in a blue for a 1-4 legendary creature of a Dulcan Artificer. Artifacts you control have hexproof, and at the beginning of your upkeep, if you control the artifact with the highest mana value or tied for the highest mana value, draw a card. Yeah, you're 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 usually you're gonna usually, do that. Yeah. The, you're the artifact deck. The flavor text impress me. <laughs> Truth. Uh, the next we have is just a card that's really really annoying. It's actually not very fun to play against. You don't see it. Yeah, especially because uh, it's already an artifact. You can already clone it so easily. So once it gets out, it's like pretty hard to get rid of. Uh, it's Platinum Angel at 7 mana. It's a 4-4 four, four flyer. Uh, you can't lose the game. Your opponents can't win. Yep. It, it feels bad to, to lose a game when the person who beat you is at minus 400 life. Yeah, I'd be very angry about that one. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, it's not great. It's pretty rough, but I uh, I like it in the deck a lot. I think it puts in a lot of good work. Oh, take this next one. This is a really, really cool card for the deck. It's a new one. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I I think I either remember calling it out when we were going through like the spoilers as it looks really cool. I like the colors in the background. But we have plant, uh, Platoon Dispenser, five colorless. At the beginning of your up uh, end step, if you control two or more other creatures, draw a card. You can pay three and a planes, create a 1-1 one, one colorless soldier artifact creature token, and you can unearth it for two and two white. I really like this card a lot. Yeah. Hear that it's, uh, thud clank, thud clank, we're saved! Number one is it's just a great draw engine. Controlling two creatures in a deck that's making token creatures, not hard at all. No. No. But it's you can make a platoon of platoon dispensers. And then the platoon dispensers also have a mana sink to make a platoon of soldiers and their artifact soldiers. Yeah, that's yeah, that's amazing. Well, and also with Urza's ability too, like this is like a 6-8 a when it drops for five mana. Well, then all the colorless soldiers are also popping out as three threes, and then with your other stuff, five fives or whatever. Yeah, Urza gets out of control pretty quick. Again, I'm blown away that Urza is a three dollar card. My brain can't piece that together. Maybe. Maybe I'm just, like, seeing it differently than everyone else, but... No, this deck is strong. You can just... You could literally just put Mana Rocks in the deck. Nothing but Mana Rocks. And still have a very strong deck with Urza. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. I might make one of those. Just a budget Urza deck that says Urza Rocks. Yep. <laughs> um, next one we got is Shimmer Mirror. Three mana for a 2-2 two -two artifact creature mirror with flash. And you may cast artifact spells as though they had flash. Yeah. Solid. Yeah. Uh, we, we've got more ramp with the silver mirror. Two mana for a 1-1 one, one mirror that taps to add one mana of any color. Or one mana that's blue, not of any color. That would be very different. 
<laughs> so, mirror of paradise. Yeah. Well, one, one mana of any color, as long as that color is blue. <laughs> True. And of course, we're going to have Solemn Simulacrum in here. Uh, when Solemn Simulacrum enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land card and put that card onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle when he dies. Draw a card, or it dies. Yeah, true. Yeah. I like it. It's obviously an include. Uh-huh. We got Steel's Overseer next. Two mana for a 1-1 one, one artifact creature construct. You can tap it to put a plus one, plus one counter on each artifact creature you control. Yeah. Pretty good when you can make copies of it, I'd say. Oh, there's like just it. everything's so well, gross yeah. now. Seeing how many times you can. <laughs> My favorite way I've played this deck, I would say six times total so far, mm. and all six times I've got to do what I wanted to do with the deck, and that's. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. Yeah, but it's it's really really fun. I like it a lot. Um, and then the final creature we've got on this list is Vidalcan Archmage. Uh, two double blue for a Vidalcan Wizard. Zero two. Whenever you cast an artifact, you draw. Makes sense. Yeah, Yeah. the, the deck's got pretty solid draw. Now we're going to get into our artifacts, which is... We've got 36 of them that are just raw artifacts. I love how that's like the opposite to like all of my decks. Like, I have 36 creatures. Yeah. Well, 36, we've got 37, 38, 39... 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. We've got 45 raw artifacts in the deck. Like, that's pretty huge. And then if you in include lands, it's up to 48. Like, nearly 50% of the deck is artifact. Which is what you want. Yeah, it's it does definitely work. It's a pretty low curve in this deck, too. Like, it's uh, it says your your average is 3, but having 3 when you have 36 things that are mostly like mana rocks isn't, isn't a trouble. Not at all. <laughs> Yeah, so I'll, I'll start us off in our artifact list of Arcane Signet. Just a nice, simple two mana. You add one mana of any color of your commander's identity. Who, who has yeah. a problem with that? Not unless you blow it up. Don't blow it up. <laughs> True. Yeah, we got... Somebody blew my soul ring up on, like, turn two last game. That somebody was mad. Yep. Who plays like this? You guys. <laughs> Uh, next up, we have Blink Blink Moth Urn, five colorless. At the beginning of each player's pre-combat main phase, if Blink Moth Urn is untapped, that player adds a colorless for each artifact they control. And you can copy that. Oh man! Yeah, this this card yeah. cannot be allowed to stay on the field with Urza whatsoever. Nope. Once you've had two or three turns of copying the Blink Moth Urn. You're, you're constantly, like, starting your turn with 60 or 70 mana, and it, it's just uh, something people can't come back from. No, I, I feel like once you actually, you hit the amount of mana, like, that production, like, even in my Savala deck, when I start, like, pumping out that, like, the absurd amount of mana, uh, it just quickly gets out of hand. Especially if all of your drawing that you're doing, you're just replenishing your hand every time you cast. Well, what, what's, ni what's nice about Urza, too, is that it has the mana sink right on the creature. Yep. If you don't have anything to do, you're able to do stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Can you imagine if they gave it green as well? Nuts. Yeah. I'm, all the ramp. Ha! Huh. <laughs> Monster. Uh, next up, we got Commander Sphere. Three mana. Tap to add one mana of any color in your commander's color identity. Sack it to draw a card. Oh, yeah. yeah. I just make a bunch. I don't need the mana. I'm just going to sacrifice them for the card draw true yeah uh we've got coveted jewel which is really really fun to start copying uh it's six mana when it enters the battlefield you draw three cards taps to add three mana of any one color so those are, those are great abilities whenever one or more creatures an opponent controls attacks you and aren't blocked that player draws three cards gains control of it untaps it this is really really fun because if there's 10 or 11 coveted jewels out no one's really gonna keep attacking anymore because they're gonna have to draw 30 cards on every attack they they will have they will have uh, a ton of mana, but yeah. now now I understand why you <clears throat> why you blocked the attack when they attacked you. Plus, it was for yeah. a lot of damage. Yeah, I didn't want. Well, yeah, uh, I didn't want. Were you watching that game when I was playing Urza? Uh, I watched a little bit of it. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Uh, the player. So Alex played a uh, Underworld Dreams which is one damage every time you draw. And I was about to make like 30 of these. 
So I was going to draw like 60 or 70 cards, but I was going to do it on attack when I got attacked and then make it so somebody took it and then, yeah, then wreck the game for everyone. But then he played that when I didn't have the mana to do it. So I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I only, I, I lost 15 life to make coveted jewel copies. As you should. <laughs> it's rough. It was rough for sure. Uh, it's, it's a really, really cool card to copy. And I, I love it just as a politics card in general. It's really fun to play around and uh, have people just say like, hey, can I hit you? I need the card draw kind of thing. And it's, oh, well, what do, what, do, what do you do for me? It was really fun in the Brina pre-con. Yeah, it's it's just one of my favorite cards like over and over. I like putting it in decks and uh, I, I like to call things group hug, but like I can't I can't say that this is a group hug deck, but it, having, having a little bit of goodwill to the table when you're doing annoying shenanigans, it never hurts. Being able, And yeah. especially like if somebody has, if someone's having a bad game, there's uh, some of these games that are coming on YouTube. Some they're some of the worst games I played. I played the Warhammer 40k precon in one. We played a Planes Chase game. This was not a good game for me. This was like one of the worst showings I've ever had in Magic history. I would say, it was rough. It was it was real bad. But uh, yeah, just just buying some goodwill to the table is nice. So coveted jewels always good to slot in if you've got it. It's six mana is not that much for the three mana you get immediately and three card draw. Next up, we have Darksteel Forge, obviously. Nine mana. Artifacts you control have indestructible. Yeah. Who hurt you? That's a good one. Yeah. Uh, got Darksteel Ingot, three mana. Uh, indestructible, tapped head one of any color. Yeah. No, no issue there. Uh, the next one, too. One of my favorite cards that I've seen printed in a while, I put this in a lot of decks just all the time, uh, the Cantor of Endless Water. It's three mana, you know max hand size, and one mana of any color. Yeah. I I love the alt art for this one. The, like the sketch version? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, uh, I, I just think that this is such a good budget mana rock. The sketch version does <laughs> look really cool. I actually really like that. I'm going to have to pick some of those up. Yeah, especially for like a really cheap card, like it's like under a dollar. It solves a lot of problems in a lot of decks. Like, uh, like I said, it's just a really good cheap. They've made tons of great cheap mana rocks this year. Yeah. Well, and the fact that you have no maximum hand size. Yeah. That right. Like it just it solves problems. I like it. Is this a new one? I don't think I've ever seen this one. No, it's just a new frame. Okay. Uh, Dreamstone Hedron, six colorless. Tap it to add three colorless to your mana pool. You can pay three, tap, and sacrifice it, and draw three cards. Yeah, there's a lot of, like, hidden draw in this deck. You have a lot of draw. Uh, we got Empowered Auto Generator. Four mana, enters the battlefield tapped. You can tap it to put a charge counter on Empowered Auto Generator. Add X mana of any one color, where X is the number of charge counters on it. Yeah, Empowered Auto Generator is a really cool ramp piece. Mm -hmm. Just Logistics. keeps getting bigger and bigger. And I think it has really cool flavor text. The magic, unlike physics, has no unbreakable laws. That is how I like to play. That's a cool. Yeah, I like that sure. flavor text. Uh, we've also got a Fell War Stone. Again, just some real basic low mana ramp. Two mana, tap, add one mana of any color. Uh, land an opponent can yeah, uh, a land an opponent controls could produce. Yeah. There's a lot of like uh, there's a lot of ways to get a turn two Urza out in this deck too. There's a lot of really really low mana ramp. And I guess Dan to set you up there. We have some more ramp coming up. Firemind Vessel, which comes into play tapped, and you can tap it for two mana of different colors. And we have the Gilded Lotus, again, five colors, and tap it, add three mana of any color. Oh, yeah. So first off, Firemind Vessel, another great one to make copies of, and so is Gilded Lotus. Like uh, I really like making Gilded Soldiers. <laughs> you know, the, the, Lotus, the Lotus Battalion. It's a... Uh, it's a it's a pretty cool thing to constantly have them. I wish those I wish there was haste enablers for them, but Dan kind of is what it is. Uh, I could have put a uh, elixir of immortality in the deck that could speed them up, but it's all right. But so the next card is my favorite card to kill the table with in this deck, and it's what I've gone out of my way to try. Uh, it's Howling Mine. 
I love putting Howling Mine in every deck I could put Howling Mine in. Everyone hears me preach the good word of Howling Mine on a weekly basis, and if people aren't picking it up now, I don't know what else I could tell you to do. He does uh, howl on the re- table sometimes. Yeah, it does. Uh, it does really again buy some goodwill. It gets games going, but uh, it's just really funny in this deck. Howling Mine is two mana at the beginning of each player's draw step. If it's untapped, that player draws an additional card. It's really fun to make like sixty Howling Mines. It really puts a clock on the game, and it's really funny for people to die to Howling Mine. My my favorite finisher in the deck is the Howling Mine of somebody. That's why I was saying the Masterful Replication. It's really funny on someone's turn when they're being a problem, and I only have like a Howling Mine out to turn the table and be like, "Hey, there's eighty Howling Mines in play," and watch. It's really funny. I love it. It's one of my favorite cards. Especially if they're like ramping hard or they're uh, just drawing a whole bunch of cards, and you're like, "I force." Like basically, that, that well, goes that's to what your I was turn. If you're if you're a draw commander and you've got like a Alhamarit's Archive, Teferi's Ageless Insight, any of those things, good luck. Yeah, good good luck. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, Howling Mine is such a funny card. I I just I love using it, and I I love the fact the moment I saw this spoiled, that was what my brain went to. It was, hey, I can make copies of Howling Mine, and it would be really funny to have like a hundred Howling Mines out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I need to I need to get a bunch of infinity tokens and then draw the Howling Legion. That's why the deck is called Howling Legion, by the way. It's so I can make Howling Mines and Howling Golems. Ooh. The, how, the Howling Golems are funny or funnier because on attack they make everyone draw. So it is really funny to force draw. That is uh, another quick aside. It's one of the most annoying things you can do in games is to force a four-person draw. No one likes that. If there's a clear winner, everyone likes it. But when you joke around and you're like, I'll attack with 80 Howling Golems. We all draw We all draw 80 cards and everyone loses at the same time. No one enjoys that and it's so funny. Because uh, unless See, someone has no, like an Angel's no, Grace. No one enjoys that. It's so funny. It's, yeah, I enjoy <laughs> it. But it's usually me doing it. So I'm usually not on the other end of it. You're a monster. Yeah, I love it. And again, Urza's ability being able to be activated right at any point. Like it's not... I'm shocked it has whiten and I'm shocked it didn't staple on some like nonsense do this ability only once a turn and if the moon is in its third phase like it's the I'm, I'm shocked that they just let this like be whenever it needs to be and again the fact <laughs> they didn't that you can weaken just, the white <laughs> the... yeah the, the fact that you can just like dump so much mana into it is so funny so quickly like you can kill whoever's problematic so fast with it yeah and they are three three howling mines Just the, the uh, amount of different things that you're able to copy in this deck. Like, you, every game you could be like, I have a different goal. Yeah, it, it's really fun to make, like, a weird board state. There's so many cool things that are really, really fun to have just, like, like triplicates of or multiples of. There, I just really, really like this deck. I have I usually don't play decks repeatedly. And like I said, I've played this deck a bunch of times. It's probably going to stay pretty similar to this. Like, I, I might... I might tool it down a little bit different, but it's probably going to stay in like this form for it. Like it'll be like one of my long-term decks. And it's just so fun. I've had a blast playing it every time it gets out of control so fast. Again, there will be a game on YouTube shortly with it. It'll be either this week or next week's game. And it's insane. It's insane how fast this deck like ramps out and has like just mana that you can't deal with. Cause mana everything's looks. mana. Yeah. yeah, and and it is also really really funny to just make a bunch of one one uh, blade steel colossus and still kill the table with them. <laughs> okay, Cause... moving on before he gets into more degenerate things, we have Icar Wellspring. Two mana enters the battlefield or is put into a graveyard. You can draw a card. I like it. Yeah, like you mentioned, all the hidden draw. Well, it's nice if someone's setting up a board wipe, you just make a quick, like, four copies of it, and, okay, well, I'll take four draw. Yeah. Because, yeah, a lot of your artifacts are going to survive the majority of board wipes. If someone's playing a farewell, they're they're a farewell to our friendship. That's the problem with this deck. That's this deck's <laughs> big weakness. Vandal Blast, farewell, any of that nonsense? No, not in this house. Well, Cyclonic <laughs> Rift. Yep. Yeah. Yuck. 
So uh, the next card, Illusioner's Bracers, two colorless. When it, uh, so it's a equipment. Whenever an ability of equipped creatures activated, if it isn't a mana ability, copy that ability. You may choose new targets for that copy, and the equip cost is three. This is another card that cannot stay on the battlefield. Yeah. Because if you put it on Urza and have six mana... You make two more, and you put them on, and then, yeah, it's it's a lot. So every time, like, you can get Urza to a point where you're making, like, ten copies every time you cast six mana. Like I said, the deck the deck can get out of hand really, really quickly. Uh, also, nothing is stopping you from having, like, five of them, and Illusionist Bracers, like uh, the Master Sculptor, and just, like, dumping, like, 30 mana in for losing five like losing a Thopter or two. Yep. Yeah. We have a bunch of junk ramp as well. We've got uh, three mana for Letter of Acceptance. Tap it, add one mana of any color. Pay two, tap it, sack it, draw a card. Like, yeah, there's just so much draw here for you. Uh, next up, we have Liquid uh, liquid Mental Coating. No, li- Liquimetal? Oh, liquid. Yeah, liquid. Liquid I've always metal. thought it was liquid. I always call it liquid metal, and I won't stop. Two colorless. Uh, it's an artifact. Tap it. Target permanent becomes an artifact in addition to its other types until end of turn. But if it's the, if it's an artifact for one turn, obviously I'm going to have copies of it after that. Well, yeah, exactly. It's going to let you make copies of, again, things that you want to. Uh, especially... As well, let's not let's not discount as well that uh, this just also makes the Memnarch ability really cheap. Mm-hmm. Tap you don't it, have to turn, turn it. Yeah, turn their commander into a artifact. Take the artifact. Start making copies of it. I read this next card as Tuke. I'm pretty sure you were mentioning this last yeah. night, Sloppy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, next one is Liquid Metal Torque. Uh, two mana for an artifact. Tap to add colorless or tap. Target non-land permanent becomes an artifact in addition to its other types until end of turn. Yeah, I, I like Tuke more. Yeah, liquid metal Tuke. <laughs> the uh, the only real difference is the non-land and land, and then the ramp. But uh, I, I do have to also mention that liquid metal coating does make it so that I can start taking people's cool lands. Ooh, and then copying them. I guess you, you yeah you could do that. I guess. Yeah, with uh. Like, like you can get if somebody's played like a Cabal Coffers Urborg kind of thing, right? You can take the Cabal I get Coffers a Cabal and then, as well. st- and then, well, then you can start making copies of the Cabal Coffers. It's yeah, it's fun. It's fun times. It's uh, it's good, clean, balanced fun for everyone. You were uh, we, right. You do have a lot of junk ramp in here. A lot of junk ramp in here. The <laughs> fact that this deck functions so well with the garbage i've put in it makes me happy like i'm uh, surprised I, like there's no mana vault or man like i'm surprised like those like key kind of mana rocks there there's like one expensive one but again you can cut it for just any other junk one and this deck will yep. still for function well i didn't put the crypt or any of that like i full disclosure i have a mishra's factory but i didn't put that in this because no not mishra's factory workshop whatever the expensive one is it's in. It's also in Ursa, like the Liberator one. Like I, I, I felt like trying to be a little more balanced with this because I, I saw this like early on as being as being out of control. Like the, the fact that just looking through this artifact list, it doesn't even seem. If a blight steals in your opening hand, it's not even something that you have to look at and be like, no, there's no way I can keep that. Like you can, you can get there pretty quick. But yes, the other junk junk rant that we're talking about is Marvel Diamond. It's two mana. Uh, it enters the battlefield tapped and it taps for one white. It's so good. It's, 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 <laughs> it's amazing. It's so good. I've never yeah. seen so, something so good. <laughs> uh, next up, we have Midnight Clock. Two and a blue. Tap to add a blue. Tap two and a blue. Put an hour counter on Midnight Clock. At the beginning of each upkeep, put an hour counter on Midnight Clock. Um, when the 12th hour counter is put on Midnight Clock, shuffle your hand and graveyard into your library, then draw seven cards, exile Midnight Clock. 
but I have eight of these already. Yeah, you can just keep doing it so that uh, you can basically, if you do it like once every few turns, you can just make it so that on everyone's turn, everyone loses their hand repeatedly. It just keeps like giving them all new hands and you all new hands. It just keeps replenishing everything. Yeah, seven new cards every turn and let's see what happens. That's some roulette right there. That's just for you though, isn't it? No, everyone, I think. Oh no, yeah, shuffle your hand. Yeah, so it's only me. I would get a new hand every turn. Yep. That's great, Not actually. Everyone. I really like that. That's fair. Yeah. I thought it was everyone for some reason. A good old wheel. Good old-fashioned <laughs> wheel, but I guess not. But I guess it's not. Uh, next up, we got Mind Stone. Two mana, tap to add colorless, or pay one and tap it to sacrifice it and draw a card. Yeah, I saw your face, Brian. <laughs> you, you take it. Go ahead, please. <laughs> Next up, we have Mind Crank, um, two colorless, and whenever an opponent loses a life, that player mills that many cards. Let's Let go, go of your memories and be reborn. Yeah. <sighs> Woo! Yeah, yeah, this is a. It's again another card that really can't stay out because with the ability to again at any time, dump that mana into Urza, you can like turn one mana into like someone losing the game. Or one damage. Sorry into someone losing the game like somebody's just like oh i'm gonna i gotta hit with my commander and draw and you're like okay and i'm like response 13 um, mind cranks yeah <laughs> i make all the mind cranks <laughs> that god damn <laughs> oh the next one another really really good mvp card in this deck uh mirage mirror three mana it's a uh, artifact for two it becomes a copy of target artifact creature enchantment or land until end of turn so Again, good. we yeah. can only copy our own artifacts, so we, we have to control them to do that. This ba this gives us the ability to get things over at least onto our side to copy them. Because uh, if Brian has a Seedborn, for instance, right? Turning it into a into a artifact with like the liquid without a D metal torque kind of thing, right? That doesn't make it so I can copy it. It just makes it so it's an artifact. But if I can get that over here, then now I can start like copying those other things. And this is another great way to not as degenerately take people's land because the Mirage Mirror will go back, but the copy will be just the copy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, like I, I really like Mirage Mirror. It puts a lot of work into this deck. Yeah. This is, yeah, the next one also is like one of the only expensive artifacts in the deck. It's uh, Mox Opal. Zero mana. It has metalcraft you tap to add one mana of any color activate only if you control three or more artifacts which obviously yep. you're going to yeah mox diamond's great in this deck too but it's uh that's that's one i use in like decks that really need the ramp like i, I put a lot of like uh mox amber sorry not mox diamond i put a lot of like well I also mox Am diamond but like uh mox ambers i put in a lot of like mono white decks that like really like are hurting for that ramp mm -hmm. yeah seeing like a mana crypt and stuff like pop up in like a mural list doesn't hurt as much as like if it popped up in this where I'm trying to turn one Urza. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Mox, uh, Mox Opal is like another between Mox Opal and uh, like the, what's it called? Uh, the metal worker. You, you cut the deck list in half cost wise. Yeah. Yeah. That metal worker was the other expensive one. Yeah. Unless you have $6 islands, in which case you don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next up we got Mirror Turbine 5 mana tap it to put a 1-1 one, one colorless mirror artifact creature token onto the battlefield or you can tap it to tap 5 untapped mirror you control search your library for a mirror creature card put it onto the battlefield and then shuffle your library that's a fun one yeah, yeah. just good to make the, little guys it's, uh, it was initially in here because of Mirror Battlesphere because I was going to be able to make so many and kill people on the attack but then I ended up cutting Mirror Battlesphere but, but basically, I just, I, the mere turbines and then pop out little artifacts for you that you can turn into whatever you want. Well, and that's that's what I like, right? Like with Blink Moth, that they're just nice artifacts that I can throw away as well. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I've seen this one. Prototype Portal for Colorless Artifact Imprint. When Prototype Portal enters the battlefield, you may exile an artifact card from your hand. 
pay X and tap it, create a token that's a copy of the exiled card. X is the converted mana cost of that card. Oh, I like this one. That's cool. Yeah, it, it also, there's a lot of great things to make copies of in this. Yeah. Uh, another really, really good, uh, we've got Relic of Legends. And I'm not surprised to see that it's already crept up to $1.50 for an uncommon. Uh, it's three mana. It taps for one mana of any color. Again, still solid stats for like a cheap rock. But it also lets you tap untapped legendary creatures you control for one mana of any color. That's just a really good ability. Yeah. I like that a lot, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really like Relic of Legends. It, again, especially in like a white deck, things that need that early ramp is really good. Uh, it's really, really good in Norn the Wary as well. The flavor text is neat, too. If the worst parts of history can repeat themselves, it stands to reason that the best parts can as well. A little bit uplifting. Like yeah, that's, that's happy. Happy in these dark times. <clears throat> I like it. Next up we have... Is, I don't know. Is it my turn? <laughs> uh, we got Sculpting Steel, three colorless. You may have Sculpting Steel enter the battlefield as a copy of any artifact on the battlefield. Yeah. Yeah. This, um, the first Sculpting Steel is fun to ramp up. The first version of this deck had a training grounds in it. I played it one time, training grounds come out. Because you can copy training grounds so quickly that you can just like make it so that there's one mana for Urza's ability, and it, it just gets nuts. So I replaced the training grounds with the sculpting steel. I was like, you know what? That's more fair, more balanced. But yeah, three mana copy of any artifact is really good. Yeah. I like it. And it's only 59 cents. Kind of surprised. Is it? I think that's just the deck version. Oh. Yeah, I wish that it would just put the actual versions that I have without me having to change them the whole time. By the time, by the time it's up, they should be changed. No, it's it's still around like thirty five cents. It says so. Yes, I'm gonna pick up so many of these then. Sculpting steel is great. Uh, Sloth, do you want to take this next one? Yeah. Next up, we got Semblance Anvil, uh, three mana artifact. You can imprint it uh, when it enters the battlefield. You may exile an online card from your hand, and spells you cast that share a card type with the exiled card cost two less to cast. Oh, that's neat. Yeah, really easy. Again, most of your artifacts can become free really quick. So I re never um, really played like a lot of artifact decks because like it's just I find that they get out of hand way too easily. Yeah, you're not wrong. Uh, we've also got some more garbage ramp with Sky Diamond. Two mana, uh, enters tapped, and you tap to add one blue. I, I like that they've been putting these in lately. I like I like just having stacks of like cheap, rampable things. Yeah. I love this card yeah. in the old frame. Oh, um, I forgot this uh this deck is also supposed to, for anyone seeing the video, it's supposed to have this card in it. It's Power Stone Shard. So I, I did forget to put that back into it. But Power Stone Shard is three mana. It taps. Uh, you add a colorless for each artifact you control. Name Power Stone Shard. A, another card that gets out of hand. So, definitely, oh. if you're looking at this list, put Power Stone Shard in in place of any of my garbage ramp or anything that's expensive. Yep, I could see it probably being pretty useful actually. Yeah, you can also do those with like the Blink Moth lands as well because you can copy them pretty quickly. Oh, yeah, any of the artifact lands, too. Wow. Yeah, like the locust things. Yeah, prototype portal with the lands is really fun, so you can just, like, keep tapping zero to put a land into play every turn. Especially if you have, like, uh, something that's untapping your stuff. Like, if I've, like, stolen a Seedborn for a turn, made a copy of it, every turn I just dump in an extra land, get four extra lands, every four extra mana every time around. Because this deck needs more mana, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if, if nothing else. Speaking of more mana, we also have Soul Ring, because, yeah, of course we have Soul Ring. Uh, one frame. mana, taps for two, yeah. yeah. And then, I don't think I've seen this one, Spine of Ish Sa. Ish Sa? Seven colorless. When Spine of Ish Sa enters the battlefield, destroy target permanent. When Spine of Ish Sa is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, return Spine of... Sorry? To its owner's hand. Okay. Yeah, it's. I think this card's really, really solid. It's very hard to get rid of. 
and it's a, another great target to be copying, like to just blow problematic things off the board. Yeah, and if you're just making copies of it too, wow, yeah, that's yeah. Like very nice. Copies that are 1-1 one, one soldiers. Soldiers Great. of Ishsa. Plus 2-2. Two, two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, we got Symmetry Matrix, 4 mana. Whenever a creature with power equal to its toughness enters a battlefield under your control, you may pay 1. If you do, draw a card. Yeah. This uh, everything card's great. And this one, yeah, I love this one. Yeah, I just like it in general, but yeah, definitely, especially with the uh, you're making soldiers, like it's just a great mana sink to keep drawing cards. Pet, the, the flavor text is so cocky on this. Achieving perfection is simple. Watch, I'll do it twice. Yeah, Mishra's Mishra. Mishra's wildin'. <laughs> <laughs> When you said you don't play artifacts, I'm shocked you don't play artifacts because there's stuff like this next one, Brian. Like, you take this next one. Oh, I have this one. I got a nice shiny one. But again, um, so we have Unwinding Clock for Colorless. Untap all artifacts you control during each other player's untap step. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. really quickly. Making copies of this will not give you additional untaps. It will all untap at one time. So five, five doesn't do it. You can't do anything in the untap step, even if it did. So don't copy this, but this does make it so that you can get all of your copies. Like if you're copying a Gilded Lotus and you have 30 of them, and every time you just make, like you make 90 mana a turn, that's, that's going to translate into what, uh, what the kids call a problem. I, I'd say yeah. at least make like two copies. Just in case one goes? Yeah, exactly. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, or, yeah, or maybe three. Maybe three. Three's even. The next one I really or like pot. because... Sloth, you take the next one, but it's uh, I really like it because of the flavor of the commander, and yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this this one's uh, Urza's Armor. Six mana. Uh, if a source would deal damage to you, prevent one of that damage. Yeah, this is a phenomenal card to like make copies of, because then oh. you, uh, you become pseudo-immortal. Yeah. I love this. this that, yeah. That's amazing. And then also the flavor text des describes how I play this deck. Urza protected his body well, but really ne he neglected his soul. Yeah, that's yeah. me for sure. Soulless <laughs> playstyles of, of uh, blight steals. Yeah, yeah. I'm and making then, yeah, we... Urza's armor soldiers. Yeah, the soldiers of Urza. <laughs> yep, there we go. Yeah, and then we also have Worn Power Stone. Uh, three mana, it enters tapped, it adds two mana. Uh, another really fun thing that you can do about this depending about how you feel about your play group. Uh, if you just don't respect them, you could get to a point, again, I love, I love everyone I play with, but if you didn't respect them as people, you could, uh, you could gather all the mana you wanted and then just kill them with an army of sky diamonds. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. just like, I'll, I'll attack you with 50 sky diamonds and 50 marble diamonds. Responses? Man, I have to say, a lot of these <laughs> artifacts have such great flavor. Like that worn power stone, like power comes in many shapes, but real power does the shaping. Yeah. That's the uh, that's the 40k worn power stone. That's nice. Yeah. No, this um this deck, like I said, it, it's it's just a phenomenal deck to play, especially looking through the list. I'm sure. I'm sure everyone has been able to see that you can really, really cut, like you can slim this list down a lot. If you take out like a, a blight steel is 70 bucks. The mox, uh, the mox opal is 70 bucks. And then, so that's $140 of the list. And then the metal worker is 140 as well. So like 280, like this, this deck drops down to like a $250 deck changing out three cards. And, and it can drop like even farther and stuff. Like after that, like, you don't really need a dark steel forge. Your your artifacts don't have to be indestructible. No, this is probably the most budget deck I've ever seen you build. I've been I've been building a lot of like more budgeter budgeter's not a word. More budget friendly decks. I'm sorry cuz you that that word's not in your vocabulary. Yeah. More more budget -er, <laughs> but shit. The, the but, deck costs. But, but, yeah, the, yeah. yeah, no, but I, I just I really really like playing this deck. It, it's it's just it's performed super fun every time. Uh, the artifacts all interact so well with each other. The power stone shard is definitely a, an increase to add in. But yeah, no, I just I, I I love every part of this deck. It's been so fun to play, and I think I'm gonna make a second uh, 
just really, really budget version of it and just see. Because, again, even even just making, like, junk artifacts, like, you can really... You can put nothing but ramp in the deck. It, it, at that point, it doesn't really matter if people kill Urza. And what are you going to do? You're going to board wipe my Sky Diamonds? Grow up. I'm surprised Ornithopter's not in here. Yeah, it's uh, Ornithopter, Ornithopter Paradise, any of those things. Yeah. But I'm just saying a zero drop for, would become a two... What, two, three? Yeah, but that doesn't ramp. Yeah. It would become a two, three, actually. Didn't even think about that. You know how funny it would be to kill people with Ornithopter of Paradises? The Army of Paradise? Urza's yep. Paradise Army? Welcome to yeah, the I, jungle. Uh, <laughs> like, like I said, I'm probably going to very quickly here put up a second version of this deck just because it, it just does so much. It does a lot of exactly what I like in a deck, and I... I've just had nothing but fun playing with this. So maybe even if I, depending how budget it is and stuff, like maybe I'll play like a hyper budget version on stream as well, just to show people like the, the power, power of ramping Urza. and making, making a thousand Halig mines. Yeah. You know? Stuff and things. Yeah, it'd be, <clears throat> it'd be pretty fun. Like I'm just, I'm just going through my like pile of like budget rocks, like on the deck or on the table here. And there's, there's some cool stuff. Well, really, like, just yeah. with your ability to make anything into an artifact, like, you could, like, it, it, the, really, the, the ceiling is, there's really no ceiling. Yeah. The, uh, the deck is, like, almost all blue cards. There's not really many things that, like, have or interact with white whatsoever. <laughs> but it's, uh, it, it's just been, like, a blast to play this deck. Like, it's, it's. I, I can't say enough good things about it. I can't for any reason understand why this cool looking version uh, version foil version of a card is three dollars. Like it's it makes no sense to me. But yeah, I, I just I I'm in love with this deck. No, I've I, I've only heard you say good things about it and I've seen you play it like a handful of times now, twice. Twice, yeah. three times. Yeah. There's only five white pips in the deck, so. Sorry, you don't have devotion. Yeah, literally, literally mm -hmm. white is only in the deck to get Urza out and to buff the artifacts. Yeah, uh, but no, I, I'll rant all day about how much fun this deck is and like silly things I've seen it do in games already. Uh, the deck list will be in the show notes. If you've got other artifacts that you think should have been in the list, I would love to know what they are. And yeah. I will end there. Thank you guys so much for listening. Um, if any of you spend like $150 on a metal worker, go to abyssproxyshop.com, uh, promo code IT99. That's going to get you a discount at checkout. Great looking proxies. They're really, really nice quality. I'm going to be doing a video as well soon of the review of them. They've got some of those coming in the mail, so they've been pretty cool. And yeah, uh, check out all of our stuff. It's on into99.com. We've been doing lots more streams lately. Uh, Come see, come see Rando number four, myself and our friend Matt and Brian play. Uh, they're really, really great decks. And yeah, I've just been, I've been having a blast making content. Thanks everyone who keeps showing up for it. And yeah, if, if you guys, if you guys like what we're doing, hit like, hit subscribe, share it, show some friends. We're going to be doing some fun, more conversation based episodes soon. I know Brian's excited for those. And yeah, that's, uh, that's the end of my ranting. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and everyone have a great day. Enjoy your week, guys. See ya.